<laughs> Powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jay Cohn. And I'm Janelle Slade. Welcome to election night 2018. So far a record breaker across Montana. Midterm elections well underway here in the Big Sky State and across the nation. Voters turning out in droves to have the final say on who will emerge victorious. Well, we've got MTN team coverage across the state tonight. Of course, live coverage here in Billings, but we're also strategically stationed in Great Falls, Helena, and Bozeman. We start in Great Falls, where Senator John Tester is gathering with his supporters to watch the results tonight as he bids for a third term in the U.S. Senate. I'm Mike Dennison, MTN's chief political reporter. I'm here at the Holiday Inn in Great Falls, where Democratic U.S. Senator John Tester and his supporters will gather tonight to watch the returns come in. Senator Tester has had a very well-funded campaign, but he's trying to overcome more than $22 million in outside spending against him, as well as four visits to Montana by President Trump to campaign against his opponent, Republican State Auditor Matt Rosendale. We're expecting a very close race. It won't be decided until late tonight at the earliest, perhaps tomorrow morning. I'm Jonathan Amberian at Matt Rosendale's campaign headquarters in Helena. The state insurance commissioner has received a lot of national Republican support in his challenge to Senator John Tester. Statewide polls have shown a tight race. Most have Rosendale as a slight underdog. His campaign will be hoping a big turnout among the Republican base will be enough to help him pull off a victory. <laughs> I'm Caitlin Corbett here outside of the Hilton Garden Inn in Bozeman, where tonight incumbent U.S. Congressman Greg Gianforte is preparing to take on Democratic House candidate Kathleen Williams. Our Montana State University MTN News poll shows Gianforte with a seven and a half point lead, but he's been campaigning as though the race is tight. He's echoed many of President Trump's sentiments, like the low unemployment rate, and appeared with the president at rallies across Montana. The polls close tonight at eight o'clock, and we'll be back here with live coverage. I'm at Fab outside of the Rialto in downtown Bozeman, where U.S. House candidate Kathleen Williams will be hosting her campaign party here tonight. Williams has raised more money than her opponent, incumbent Greg Gianforte, in the past several months, but still comes in as the underdog in most polls. Williams will need a big voter turnout from both Montana youth and women as she goes in tonight, hoping to pull out the victory. Stay with us as we continue our campaign coverage as the results come in. All right, and much more from all of our MTN reporters as this evening progresses. Keep in mind, the polls are still open for another two and a half hours or so. And here in Billings, there's been a steady stream of folks at Metro Park all day, ever since the doors opened there at bright and early at 7 this morning. And that's where Q2 Samantha Sullivan is standing by live to bring us the latest from Yellowstone County's biggest polling place, Sammy. Well, Jay and Janelle, you're exactly right. There's been a steady stream of people coming here to Metro Park to get their votes in. As you can see, still quite a few people here tonight, that kind of after work rush. We got here about an hour ago, and there have been people constantly coming through here. And even without these votes being counted yet, already a historic day here in Montana, record-breaking turnout for this midterm election. As of this morning, over 3,200 votes were, vo uh, were absentee ballots were returned, which is more than in any midterm election in the state and more than any presidential election with the exception of 2016. Here in Yellowstone County, about six, 60,000 votes, um, absentee ballots have already been returned. But of course, record-breaking turnout, a two-page ballot here in Yellowstone County, coupled with the fact that many are predicting close races, especially when it comes to that Senate race. We could be waiting until tomorrow morning for some of the winners to be called. Now, if you haven't cast your ballot, you do still have time. As Jay and Janelle mentioned, it was about two and a half hours until the polls close here. You can come vote in person, or you can just drop off your absentee ballot. You can also come here to Metro Park to register to vote if you haven't done that already. You're able to register and vote at the same time. Jay and Janelle will be checking back with you before the polls close, but for now, I'll send it back to you. All right, Q2, Samantha Sullivan. We'll be checking down uh, with her throughout the night. Thanks for the report. By the way, again, polls open until 8 o'clock. Now, throughout tonight's election coverage, we will weigh in with our political analyst. Joining us from the right, Republican analyst Jake Eaton, and on the left, Democratic political analyst Brandon DeMars. And both of you, gentlemen, welcome. Brandon, let's start with you, this U.S. House race. Let's focus on Greg Gianforte versus Kathleen Williams. Williams pulled off quite the surprise in the June primary. Mm -hmm. Do you think she has another surprise up her sleeve tonight? I think it's very possible. Um, the polling in the last couple of weeks has shown that it's tightening. She's had a strong fundraising advantage. Um, and on top of that, the turnout's huge in Gallatin County, her home. So I think that could be an indication. 
Gallatin County, both the home for Kathleen Williams and Greg Gianforte. Is it uh, important on who wins the home county? Yeah, I think they'll be looking to see who these voters are. Um, are they new registered students, young people, uh, folks who haven't turned out in previous midterms? All right. And Jake, we step back and look at the U.S. Senate race. President Trump has been in Montana four times, Vice President Mike Pence a handful of times. In the end, it seemed like it was a little bit more personal, Trump versus Senator Tester. Well, I think it's been personal from the beginning, and it really started when John Tester went on national television and slandered Ronnie Jackson, the president's nominee for the VA secretary. From then on, I think that was just a wake-up call to every Republican, both in Montana and nationally, that you know, despite what he says here in Montana, Tester was really one of the extreme ideologues in Washington, D.C. And I think that's why the president invested so much time and energy into coming to Montana. All right. Thanks so much. Now we want to check in with Q2's Russ Riesinger standing by with uh, more analysis for us. Russ. Well, I'm here with uh, MSUB political professor, Dr. Jason Atkins. Dr. Atkins, you conducted the Montana poll at the start of October and it showed support for both the initiatives, 185 and 186, since then a ton of money is poured into our state for advertising. Do you see that possibly changing uh, the outcome or do you still see these two passing? Well, could um, one thing that the Montana uh, poll indicated was there are a lot of undecided votes on both initiatives, at least 20% on the initiative 185, Medicaid expansion and tobacco tax, and more undecideds for the 186 to deal with um, potential and to hard rock mining. Mm. Um, so they are pouring money and they're doing it for a reason. Also, um, the uh, it appears we have one of the best turnouts we've ever had here in Montana, well on our way to that for a midterm. Did, will that have any impact, do you think, on uh, how this could turn out? It could. Uh, Montana polls showed that younger voters who usually don't turn out in huge numbers during midterms, um, the, the younger voters in Montana are skewing more Republican, more conservative, so that can turn the tide against both 185 and 186. All right, Dr. Atkins, we'll look forward to more of your analysis throughout the evening, but now let's send it back to Jay and Janelle. All right, thanks so much, Russ. And to help put this election into perhaps better perspective, we ask you to veteran reporter, manager, and commentator Vic Miller for his thoughts on the incivility this election year. Now, Vic calls it smear and sneer, and in his opinion, it's taking a toll on the quality of those who run for office. Somebody's going to dig up something that said you cheated on an arithmetic <laughs> test when you were in the third grade and beat you to death with that statement. They'll go way the heck and gone back in your history, and all of us have done one or two things that we don't necessarily want blabbed all over the place. But we are discouraging really good people from running simply because of the turn these campaigns have taken at this point to subject yourself and your family to this kind of abuse. I said, I'm not gonna do it. And particularly if you're a successful person, why do it? So you end up determining who's gonna be your elected official, elected official by basically choosing who's the smartest guy in the dumb part of the class. Vic Miller, never uh, afraid to never speak back. his mind. And as for what could change the nastiness of the campaign, well, Vic says if voters start defeating candidates who resort to those tactics, that might do it. But he also says, don't hold your breath. Well, it appears Mother Nature tried to make getting to the polls a bit difficult this morning. Bob McGuire joining us now. Bob, things have dried up, and tonight voters just need a warm coat. That seems to be the case, you know. Yeah, Mother Nature thought she was going to make a big impact on the snow today. Let me show you what's happening out there. We go to the Doppler radar. This is what we had this afternoon. You can see the snow showers making their way into the area. And then this was happening last night, then this morning. And now you see here we are this afternoon, the last uh, 4 o'clock. We got a little bit of snow making its way into the Billings area. But it really was not a great deal of snow. Let me show you how much snow we did. The big winners were over at Wilsow. They had 8 inches of snow. McLeod, uh, Columbus, and also Livingston had about 6 inches of snow. Bridger had 4 inches of snow in the Billings area. It was just merely a skiff of snow, and we're expecting to see another batch of snow moving in probably sometime tomorrow afternoon. But after that, it looks like it was just a very snowy morning as far as the highways were concerned this morning. A lot of slippery streets. That was a pretty bad morning for us. We could see the same thing again tomorrow morning. Do you know, Jay? All right. Thank you, Bob. Coming up on tonight's 530 News, a child paralyzed by a new polio-like disease is now getting a second chance. We will find out more. And coming up in sports tonight, how far can West High's top-seeded volleyball girls take it this week? at the state tournament. Scott here's tonight from the Bears. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Green.
This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.